Garry Kasparov is the greatest chess player of all time. A world champion since 1985, he meets other international stars of the chess world two or three times a year here in Vishkanzee, a Dutch seaside resort surrounded by steelworks. At nearly 40, the challenge Kasparov now faces is to resist his young assailants and prove to the world he's still the greatest. For two weeks, the grandmasters battle it out in a gymnasium, which has been turned into a playing hall for the occasion. Chessboard uh, in miniature reflects uh, a major conflict uh, of uh, two intellects. Chess is a psychological game, it's a psychological warfare, and uh, that's why the conflict is built in. It's about beating your opponent, uh, it's, to some extent it's imposing your will on him. If we are talking about the top professional players, it's evident that the character is shown in the games. My chess style is aggressive. I'm very competitive. I feel that I have to win if I'm involved in the battle. When it, when it goes to the hard fight, so I, I know that I have to forget all the feelings and, uh, you know, I have to mobilize everything and ignore the personality opposite me and just to call it enemy, quote, unquote. But, you know, an enemy without any characteristics. So you have to win, you have to destroy it. It, not even him, him and her, it. I think uh, the question of whether you need to hate your opponent to win and all is pretty subjective. Like I said uh, in the other answer, everyone has his own style. Now there are people who, who find it easier to move through life hating everyone and then for them it's much easier if they hate their opponent to play well against that guy. And if they like someone they may have problems but I don't think it's uh, you know, a prerequisite for everyone. <laughs> Sometimes he, he makes some faces, he reacts sometimes in a strange way when I make a move. He can make strange face, so like he didn't expect this move. 
But okay, and many opponents they actually start thinking that probably they made a bad move because he didn't expect it. But I, uh, for me, it's it's other way around. I I'm happy because uh, well, I then I think that he missed this move. That this is a very strong move and he missed it. <laughs> so I'm happy. No, okay, I'm half joking, but in general, yeah, I don't pay any attention on it. So uh, he likes to smell the fear. There is always uh, this extra uh, tension when when playing him uh, if you can control this uh, if you're not afraid of him uh, it's a very big advantage it's true that you really feel something coming out of Kasparov but uh, I think the best is you just ignore it and really try to focus on your game because if uh, you start to think oh really he is such a genius and he's even behaving so strong then what kind of chance I have if he does anything, you know, over the board, staring at you, then I just look back, you know, it's just a normal way. are complaining that you know you look at my face and you can see me a lot of things because, but because I live my own life you know personally I do not mind what they're doing because I established a, a very simple motto in my life if I play well I don't care what they're doing I'll win so that's why my personal you know feelings my world my uh, state of mind are far more important than anything else I think there is always this aura about uh, the world champion that, um, uh, you know, all laurels have been given to the champion. Uh, the world champion is like an emperor in, in chess. Very different behavior to other players, but uh, well, I would say that uh, he deserved that uh, we don't complain about it because okay, he's a great player, and as as far as he, I can tell you, as far as he plays chess so well, everybody would say it's okay, it's no problem. Maybe once if he if he lose his title, everybody says, oh, come on, this guy is so arrogant. I mean, this is impossible. How can he behave like this? He's not a world champion. But as far as he's a world champion, he understands also, I think, himself that uh, people would forgive it. Winner of the tournament once again this year, with an impressive score of nine and a half points out of a possible 13, Kasparov has proved to everyone that he's still the best. The prize-giving ceremony seems somewhat modest, at least in the eyes of the man it honors. How could anyone forget 1985? This was the year Kasparov, then aged 22, became the youngest world chess champion in history. He beat Karpov in a match lasting several months. The event made the headlines all over the world. It was the era of the Cold War, and the chess players symbolized the intellect of the two blocks. Having just been discovered by the general public, chess was at the height of its popularity in the press. Since the fall of communism, the World Chess Championships no longer attract the attention of the media. Only Kasparov's defeat against the computer Deep Blue in 1997 thrust the world of chess back into the limelight. 
Kasparov's real achievement, more than having become world champion, is to have held on to the title for 15 years. An unbelievably long reign, a quiet reign following a noisy coronation, a discreet reign, a reign which, to hear him, is by no means over. So far, I don't want to think about the moment when career ends. Uh, uh, the key moment is to, uh, to realize that you, you cannot fight for the title. So, so far, I don't see anyone who could take the title from me unless, you know, I'm destroying myself. Kasparov cannot resign himself to seeing chess slip back into obscurity. For the past 15 years, he has done everything in his power to give chess a professional status. His dream is to see it become as popular as tennis and receive as much media coverage. He was the first chess player to hire an agent. Owen Williams, a former member of the Davis Cup Organization Committee, now works exclusively for Kasparov. He pays, he pays no attention. He pays no attention to me at all. Okay. So, no, I had to talk to him. Mm -hmm. I'm planning at the moment for you to be in LA three days. Yeah. Be the Simul on the 28th, the big dinner for the charity for Mentor, and you meet all the royals and yeah. all the, yeah. the, ho the hoody doos, yes. the howdy doos on the 29th, and then the 30th is Halloween, you'd probably leave on that day. To New York. Brighton, November 8th, we'll know next week for sure. So this is the, it's, if it's Brighton here, then my idea was then I go to Zurich to see William, mm -hmm. and then go to Geneva. So that could be one trip. Oh yes, I've got that. Lisbon, this is the details of Lisbon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big chess festival from the 13th to the 21st. Mm -hmm. There's a bank sponsoring it. Mm -hmm. At 3 p.m. they want to do a press conference, mm -hmm. followed immediately by a simul against 30 kids, mm -hmm. 8 to 20 years mm -hmm. of age. Mm -hmm. Sign autographs mm -hmm. afterwards and uh, visit the chess center mm -hmm. and home. Mm -hmm. Usual fee plus all expenses. Mm -hmm. yes. So now, um, I have to arrive on the 19th here. Uh, we don't have time. Yeah. No, we don't have time. This is this too, 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 tight. too tight. But I think the TV media thing will fit in there. Very nicely. Yeah. Probably need to so go. So here is I am facing a major, major problem at home. Twenty eighth October. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. So it's Vadim's birthday. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So I understand, that, but mm. don't get me in the middle of that. No, no, no. no. It's, it's <laughs> my responsibility. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There is no way that Gary thinks uh, in his life in the same way as chess. In chess, he's very, very orderly. He's a genius. He's a, he's a genius on a chessboard. Um, in his life, he's much more human. He he uh, won't like to hear me say this, but he makes mistakes. He uh, he has many different things. He's not. Uh, uh, he's, he'll admit to you that he's not a good businessman. Chess is a very complicated game, but it's not as complicated as life. That's why the strategies that are successful in chess uh, being um, in, in, implied for the regular life are not as successful. Uh, so that's why, for me, it's very important to recognize what part of my chess intelligence is useful for my daily life or for some important decisions that I have to take from time to time. He carries many of the disciplines of the chessboard into his life. Uh, he likes to know what he's doing, where he's going, what time, what place. He likes to be informed and like many people, he likes to be ahead of the game. Gary doesn't like to be surprised. <laughs> 